Hello, I'm Hector Gonzalez with Conso and Meisterbrand, and I'm here today to show you how to disassemble, reassemble, and adjust tension on an L-style bobbin case. So the first thing we'll do is we'll remove the backlash. And the backlash is a spring that's used for either a metal bobbin or a plastic sided bobbin, and it prevents from spinning too fast in the case and um, giving you a, uh, a knot or, uh, or tangling up a thread in the bobbin case. If you have sideless, cardboard sided, or magnetic bobbins, you need to remove uh, the, um, the backlash spring before using the bobbin with your case. In case you are using a metal bobbin or a plastic sided bobbin, we'll go ahead and show you how to put that backlash back into your bobbin case. So if you notice, you have four points on the backlash, which actually serve as clips once we insert the backlash onto the bobbin case. And there's four points on the bobbin case, which will allow us to insert those four, those four clips. And we'll go ahead and slide this down. Now, using something such as a screwdriver I have here, we'll gently push that backlash back into place, making sure that those four clips fall in the gaps corresponding with the bobbin case. Once we have it back in place in the correct place, we'll notice the sides of the backlash will actually sit flush with this flat part of the bobbin case here. And the center will have a spacing, which is the functionality of the spring that allows the bobbin to push forward. Now what we'll do is we will remove the tension spring on the bobbin case. As you see here, the tension spring is attached by two screws. The smaller of the two um, holds the spring in place the largest of the two actually adjusts tension. So we'll go ahead and remove both. Now we'll go ahead and reassemble the bobbin case. Take my tension spring. All right, there we go. Go ahead and start with the first screw. Smaller screws a bit more visible. That's the smaller screw. Recommend using a magnetic screwdriver for this. Okay. Now the smaller screw I will tighten the torque down a bit. This is my attachment screw. My top screw is actually my, like I mentioned earlier, uh, our tension adjustment. And we can see here where if we turn it clockwise our screw will close. Turn it counterclockwise, it'll open. In this case, we have a magnetic sided bobbin, so we will leave the backlash out and we'll go ahead and thread the bobbin case and check and adjust our tension. So, on this single sided magnetic bobbin, and this is a Filtech magnet glide, we'll go ahead and insert it. Thread our first portion here, come up to the spring, and the first method of testing tension that we have is holding the bobbin by the thread without threading the pigtail on top. Just holding it up and jerking it down a bit. And what we're looking for is um, at the time of jerking the bobbin, it should just drop down about two to three inches. As you notice here, it's actually coming all the way down and hitting our table. So what I'll go ahead and do is tighten that tension up a bit more. We'll try that one more time. So as we hear, see here, we have about a two-inch drop. Now, the other method we have of testing our tension is using this device here. This is a bobbin case tension gauge uh, by Toa. And the way we use this is we will mount our bobbin case onto uh, this area here. We will thread it through the points, and so give us a, a reading. Now, again, uh, to test the bobbin case, we will leave the pigtail unthreaded, and we will insert the bobbin case also. 
make sure it snaps in. I'll use I'll use the side of the latch, which falls into the groove up here to hold it from spinning. And we'll go ahead and thread these wheels we have here. We'll come down to this point. I like to set my gauge down flat while I'm doing this. And what I want to do is I want to pull consistently, not too fast. And I want to pull to get a consistent reading. Right now we're reading about 250 on the gauge. On our embroidery machines, we usually adjust anywhere ranging between 200 to 300, depending on the application. Now, the great thing about this gauge is we have a point of access here to adjust. We can make our fine adjustments and come back to the final test. Finally, we have a blade here which will fire thread. And this is now ready to go on our machine and start sewing.